Hi there, hello and welcome back once again to the channel. I'm here with another shoe review. It's a red box, it's a New Balance box. What is it? And today we have the New Balance Fuel Cell RC Elite V2. Let's get into it. really really cool looking shoe and it's been pretty popular on social media since images first started popping up. I've had my eye on it for quite some time. It was released in the UK a couple of days ago. I managed to get an order in. It arrived earlier today and yes very first impressions out of the box are incredibly positive. I absolutely love this colorway and this is going to be my first time running in New Balance as well so I'm really interested to see how the shoe performs against some of the other shoes that I've been running in, particularly the carbon plated racing series of the likes of the Vaporfly and X%, Atreu, the Artist, we've got the Socony Endorphin Pro, and the Adidas Adio Pro as well. So all of these shoes, which I think are fantastic shoes, I'm really excited to see how this stacks up against them. Now, as always, what I'm not going to do is to delve into loads of technical specifications. As I say on all of my videos, there are plenty of other YouTube videos that go into the detail of what the materials are, the drop, all of that sort of stuff. What I'm primarily interested in is how do the shoes look, how do they feel, how they feel on foot and how they perform during that first run and then a follow-up video in a short while once I've done some more miles in the shoe as well. So yeah, that's what I find important to me. If the shoe looks good and it feels good and performs well, then that's a winner. So the first thing you notice when you get the shoes out of the box is that they look absolutely awesome. I'm loving this bright purple colorway. Something that I really like is, you'll notice this one is purple and pink. If I grab the left shoe, it's purple and a sort of orangey yellow color. So they're not matching shoes. So there's a yellow and a pink version left and right, which is a really cool little feature, I think. And the other thing you notice is the shoe feels quite light. Now, I'm not sure how the weight stacks up against some of the other shoes out there, but certainly in hand, it feels quite light and it feels quite squishy. So let's take each characteristic one at a time. So we'll start with the bright purple upper. It's a mesh upper, it looks really breathable. It's got a bit of flexibility in it, so there's a little bit of stretch there. It feels as though it's going to be hard wearing. There's sort of a, a reinforced element around the front of the toe box here, just to protect that material, make it a little harder wearing. What have we got around the back? Around the back, there's a bit of reinforcement in the heel and the Achilles there. Although not too rigid, but more rigid, say, than the, the middle of the shoe here. There's a little bit of cushioning here as well. If I bring that in close, you'll see sort of the pink bit around the ankles there. That's quite plush and cushioned. Certainly more so than some of the other racing shoes out there. So I think that's going to feel fairly comfortable. We've got lots of perforations in the upper. Again, just bringing that in close. So I think it's going to feel breathable. It's going to remain nice and cool during the run as you sort of swing your foot into each step. You're going to be getting airflow into the top of your foot, probably going to help with uh, preventing your foot from getting sweaty and all of that sort of good stuff. I really like this branding. I think this looks really, really cool. The New Balance logo there kind of swooping across the front of the shoe on the outside and along the inside of the shoe here, you've got the New Balance branding along with this sort of pink element on the right shoe and the yellowy orange there on the left. I think it looks really, really cool. Now the tongue, got a black tongue, it's not gusseted, it's not attached inside, so I wonder whether that's gonna flap around at all or slip, although the laces do loop through the tongue there on the top, which I think will hold it in place to some degree. In terms of the laces, nothing too special about them. They feel like regular laces, really. The lacing system, you've got three eyelets, so not too many eyelets there, followed by a double eyelet at the top. Now, as always, double eyelet at the top, for me, means runner's knot. If you haven't tried the runner's knot yet, I'm going to put a link to the video up on screen here. 
take a look at that. That video is an instructional video to show you how to apply the runner's knot. What's good about the runner's knot is it allows you to get a really nice, secure, locked in fit into your shoes without over tightening. What it does is it means you don't have to really pull the laces tight across the top of your foot, which can cause a bit of pain, or certainly in my experience it does across the top of the foot. You get a really nice, secure, locked in fit without your ankle and your heel kind of slipping up and down. So yeah, definitely check out that video. Try the runner's knot, it will change your life. Now onto the midsole. So we've got this fuel cell midsole, which just giving it a squeeze feels so squishy. It's really, really soft to the touch. Now I wonder how that's going to feel during the run, because it's not necessarily just at the back there either. It kind of goes all the way through to the front, albeit slightly firmer at the front here in the forefoot area. But at the back here, it is super squishy. Look at that. Now, I might worry that if I were to be landing here, that squishiness, since the platform of the shoe is fairly thin in the heel area, I might worry about a little bit of instability. Since I'm a four foot striker, my landing point is around about here. And so I'm really not gonna be impacted, if you like, by any instability around the rear of the shoe here, unless I'm walking which I don't think I'll be doing much walking in these shoes because they look super fast. So yeah, that midsole feels super soft and squishy. So I'm really excited to see how that feels underfoot. Just giving the shoe a little bend there, it is fairly firm and rigid. So there's a full length carbon fiber plate running throughout the midsole. This shoe, it's fairly firm, probably something quite similar to the Vaporfly in terms of, in terms of firmness, but we'll see how that feels once it's on the foot. The outsole then got this really cool kind of patterned rubber outsole, not covering the entire foot, so all of the white bit here and a few white bits in and around the outsole there is the fuel cell midsole on display. So depending on where you're gonna land, wonder how that fuel cell midsole is gonna hold up once it comes into contact with the ground. If you take the Zoom X of the Nike range, for example, when that comes into contact with the ground, it doesn't last all that long. So let's see how this holds up if you're kind of standing on stones or rough terrain or anything like that. But yeah, a fairly reasonable coverage of rubber on the outsole. It's quite a thin coverage as well, so we'll see how that lasts over time and whether that wears through quickly or not. The traction, it's, it's fairly smooth to be fair. You've got a little bit of patterning and tread on the front here and a bit of patterning around the back. You've also got a little bit of outsole rubber either side of the heel here as well. Now a feature that I really do like is the cutout in the middle of the midfoot there. And you can see that that's exposing the carbon fiber plate. Now that serves two purposes. One purpose is that it looks pretty damn cool because you can see the carbon fiber. The other purpose is it just saves a little bit of weight. So even that small section of midsole being removed is obviously going to save you a couple of grams because it's a bit of material that's not there. So next up is to slip them on and see how they feel. That slipped on without much problem, although the tongue did kind of fold over a little bit there. There's not a massive amount of lace left over once you put the runners not in there. The laces aren't all that long. Right there. First thing that you notice when you put these on your feet is that squishiness of that outsole. Now, even through to the forefoot, actually, it does feel super squishy. It's like walking on little pillows. And I'm really excited to see during a run how that feels. I think these are going to be great over those longer distances when your feet would usually start to feel a bit beaten down. I think these are going to keep your feet feeling really fresh, but that is certainly the first impression that I'm getting. The heel is insanely squishy, but again, that's not really going to benefit me in any way during a run because I land on my forefoot. Now in terms of the sizing of the shoe, I've gone for a UK 12 and a half. Now there's a couple of reasons for that. One reason is because I could not get hold of a UK 13 or 13 and a half. The sizing seemed to go 11, 12, then 12 and a half, and then 13 and a half. Now I would usually run in a UK 13. 
So that scuppered those plans. I can't get hold of the UK 13. So it was a toss up between trying to get a 13 and a half and getting a 12 and a half. I spoke to a few people and some had said the fit is similar to the Adidas Adi Zero Adio Pro. Now that has a fairly long fit, or certainly I have experienced that. So I would usually run in a 13. The Adio Pro finishes at a 12 and a half. They don't make bigger than that size. So I had to go for a 12 and a half. And actually it turns out there's plenty of room in the toe box, even for my big and wide feet. And I'm happy to say actually, in this shoe as well, I've got, in a 12 and a half, I've got that thumbnail's width that I'm looking for to prevent my toes from bashing against the front of the shoe and getting blisters and beating up toenails during the run. And because there's quite a bit of flexibility in that mesh upper, it actually feels as though I've got plenty of space either side of my foot as well. My toe is touching a little bit on that reinforced element of the upper there, but because it's quite soft, I think I'm gonna be okay with those. So I'm not too worried about how that's going to feel during the run. Just taking a few steps back and forward, and it's not an immediately obvious plate, to be honest. Not like the Vaporfly, which I remember putting that on for the first time and feeling as though I was stepping on a spoon and transitioning my weight towards the kind of the spoony end of the spoon and the back of the shoe, or the back of the spoon if you imagine, kind of picking my foot up and pushing it forward into the next step. I'm not feeling that in this. It feels a little bit more subtle. So let's see how the energy return is during the run. But yeah, very comfortable on foot. All around the foot feels well held in place. That midsole feels nice and bouncy. So that's about as much as I can say just by walking up and down and having a little dance in the kitchen. So all that's left for me to do is to lay them out with the rest of my kit and take them out for a spin tomorrow. I'll see you then. Right, so here we are then. Let's get this done. We're off. Right, so not a fantastic start. Hang on. So something's going on inside the right shoe. I'm just gonna have to stop and have a look. It feels as though the insoles just slipped all the way back and the front of my foot is hanging right off the end of it. Let's take this off and have a look. Yeah, so I'm one kilometer in. I've already stopped once already because something felt funny at the back of the shoe. So yeah, the insoles come loose and it slipped right back and I could feel that my toes were touching the shoe underneath and it was sort of curling up underneath the insole. So that's a bit frustrating. Hmm. All right, let me sort this out and get back to the run. Right, we'll get back to it. So yeah, that was a bit weird. I could just feel something building up at the back of my right heel. And then I was aware at the front of the shoe that my toes were hanging off the end of the insole. Oh man, it feels like it's doing it again. Right, let's just crack on and see what happens. I'm not sure what's going on there. I don't know whether I'm going to have to perhaps try gluing that insole in. No, it's happened again. It slipped right back behind my heel and the outside toes. I can feel now hanging over the end of the insole and touching the bottom of the shoe and it's not comfortable at all. Left shoe feels okay. Right, I'm coming in for two and a half kilometers now. And it's been a really frustrating first two and a half kilometers. I've had to stop four times now. I've now just given up on trying to resolve that insole issue. It slipped back again. I can feel it behind my heel on my right foot. Uh, my right toes are overhanging at the front of the shoe which is just a bit uncomfortable so I think what I'm gonna have to do is perhaps apply some double-sided tape just to try and stop that insole from slipping around so for the remainder of the run however I'm gonna try and look beyond that because the first 500 meters or so out of the box felt great 
really nice cushion shoe. It felt nice and responsive. And now let's just settle in for another couple of kilometers before I give another update. Okay then, so we're coming in for five kilometers now. And it might not look like it, but this has been a long, steady uphill. And the shoes feel really light, they feel really good. I'm really impressed with the, the squishiness of that midsole. It's a lovely, soft, cushioned landing with each impact. It feels nice and plush. And then you're getting a lovely amount of energy return as well. It's a great combination, a great partnership between that midsole and the carbon fiber plate. It does feel as though I'm getting pushed forward into the next step almost effortlessly. And that soft midsole, to me, it's feeling softer than the likes of the Vaporfly Next Percent. Perhaps not as much as the Alpha Fly, because the Alpha Fly has that air unit in the forefoot, which takes on a lot of that impact. But to me, it feels somewhere in the middle. So nice soft landing on the forefoot, a great positive. Shoe feels nice and light, feels breathable. That mesh upper is keeping my feet nice and cool. There's a bit of a wind, headwind coming at me and I can almost feel that breeze on my forefoot as I'm swinging my foot into the next step. So no issues with overheating feet, I think. Now it's almost at the turning point, which is just as well because I'm not feeling this hill this morning. We get a coast back down for a little while before then pushing for a kilometer. Right. Turn around now, head back down. So yeah, aside from that issue with the insole, I've been really impressed so far. Okay, so far I've been running at a fairly easy pace of around five minutes a kilometre. Coming in for kilometre six, so I'm going to put the hammer down and see how they hold the race pace. Here we go, that's it. So just picking up the speed then and then feeling immediately responsive. Oh, it's a nice feeling. That frustrating insole on the right foot, it's actually hanging out at the back of the shoe now. I've just stopped for the seventh time to try and put that back into place. Let's try and look beyond that. So yes, running at 3.30 a kilometre now. And the shoes are responding really well. We'll pick it up later in the interval. And that is that then. So one kilometre split in a time of three minutes and 29. So I was actually running a little faster than I thought there. The perceived effort was lower than what my actual output was, which is good. It's either a sign of great shoes or a sign of my fitness coming back. Hopefully it's a combination of the two. So I'm just still fighting back from that leg injury that's had me out for five months. And actually this last week, has been my biggest mileage week to date so as of right now I'm on a little over 70 kilometers for the week so that's definitely a positive rest day tomorrow I think just to let my legs recover from that but yeah it's primarily been 70 easy miles but felt good all the same so yes anyway digressing so back to the shoes so they picked up the pace really nicely there nice response to the extra effort that I was putting in as I picked up towards race pace. So fantastic there on the acceleration front. And then they held that pace really nicely as well. So that cushioning was really apparent while I was pushing hard. My feet didn't feel beaten down. My legs felt okay. So I know that was only one kilometre, so I'll need to test it over some sort of longer distances at that faster pace. But yes, I can see that that nitrogen infused fuel cell midsole is providing a great amount of cushioning in responsiveness. I took on quite a tight right angle turn at that fast pace. The shoes felt stable. I didn't feel as though I was going to be slipping off the midsole. The upper kept my foot held nicely in place as I took that turn. So no issues there in terms of stability. The traction as well. So at one point I had to run off the main road onto a bit of a gravel path and then onto some grass to get out of the way of an oncoming car. That smooth 
traction of the outsole didn't have any issues whatsoever transitioning from one surface to the other so actually I'm not concerned in any way about traction obviously it's quite dry out here today so I'm not getting to test it in the wet but certainly no issues so far in these conditions so I've got a couple of kilometers left to go before I get home so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put the camera away sit back enjoy the ride and pick it up at the end so here we are coming in for the finish and that is that then so 10.10 kilometers in the new balance fuel cell rc elite version 2 right just ignoring my frustrations with the insole i think i've labored that point enough now so aside from that actually one last thing so i don't know if you can see here there it is okay so we'll ignore that for now because i did eventually manage to forget about it kind of <laughs> um so yeah overall a fantastic shoe i really really enjoyed that run they felt really responsive really light really cushioned yet fast at the same time it's kind of the best of all worlds now i've got a half marathon race coming up next week and these are a serious contender if i can get rid of that insole issue by sellotaping that down perhaps these are a serious contender for a race shoe for that day now at the moment what i'm thinking is it's either the vaporfly next percent 2 it's the alpha fly next percent or it's the rc elite v2 now i've got seven days to make a decision and perhaps take these out for another run in the meantime but yes i think they are a really serious contender for a ratio because they do feel fast but they do feel comfortable my feet aren't feeling beat up now i know i've only done a little over 10 kilometers and a half marathon is over double that but there's absolutely no signs of wear and tear in my legs or my feet so i do think they're going to be a really good option so yes great shoe really enjoyed that run i'm looking forward to putting more fast miles and perhaps a couple of races into the shoe just to see how they perform so at some point i'll do another update video but in the meantime thank you very much for watching comment like subscribe all of that sort of great stuff share this video with all of your friends and i look forward to seeing you on the next one all right we've got some bonus footage are you ready my boy yeah. count down from three three two one and go right just nice and easy okay keep your head up <laughs> that's it just keep running <laughs> how far do you want to go really far <laughs> really far right turn right let's go along here